It's a rivalry Saturday in Florence, Alabama, where today the University of North Alabama welcomes Jacksonville State University to Brawley Stadium for the first time since 1992. Welcome into the Big South Conference Game of the Week presented by GEICO. I'm Benjamin Ray alongside my broadcast partner, Brian Neese. The biggest story for this game is the absence of Jacksonville State head football coach John Gross. Earlier this week, the school announced that Coach Gross had tested positive for COVID-19 and will miss this game. Assistant head coach and offensive coordinator Jimmy Ogle will fill in. And Brian, in a football season that's been full of adjustments, the Gamecocks have a big one to overcome today. Yeah, you're exactly right. That will be an adjustment, not seeing your head coach on the sideline. But you mentioned Jimmy Ogle. He's taking over the reins today, 21st year at Jacksonville State. He's a familiar face. They all know him and love him. And uh, he'll be a calming factor for the Gamecocks today. The last time the Gamecocks played in Brawley Stadium, well, they won the Division II National Championship. Now today, the two teams face off for the first time as Division I programs in Florence, Alabama. That brings us to today's 48th meeting. Brian, both of these teams are looking to make a big statement in one of the few pure FCS football games. Yeah, you're exactly right. You look at Jacksonville State, and they're trying to prove that they're still one of the upper echelon teams of the FCS. They're trying to prove, yes, we're a team that contends year in and year out for a national championship. On the other side of that coin, you've got North Alabama, uh, a newbie here in the, the Division I, so to speak. They're trying to prove that, yes, we're going to get to that level, and we will be a contender just like Jacksonville State is. Let's meet our Sunbelt Rentals Impact Players of the Game, where we'll be watching two guys with NFL potential in Zarek Cooper for Jacksonville State and for North Alabama, Wallace Cowens, Jr. Ben, Zarek Cooper's a big guy quarterback, 6'3", 225 pounds. He's a fifth-year senior. He knows this offense inside and out, very athletic. The only thing about Zarek Cooper right now is he's still looking for his first touchdown pass of the year. Not uh, common for him at all. He's used to having three or four by now. He'll be looking for number one here today. And then on the other side, you mentioned Wallace Cowens, the defensive lineman for North Alabama. Cowens, 6'4", 240. He's a senior as well. Uh, led the team in tackles against Liberty. Ten starts last year he's a beast coming off that defensive end kickoff is coming up next this is the big south conference game of the week brought to you by geico triggers and little back deep this big south broadcast is brought to you in part by Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com today. And by Sunbelt Rentals, we have equipment for that. It's a beautiful day for football. Jacksonville State won the toss and deferred. North Alabama will get the football first. Benjamin Ray, Brian Neese welcoming you to Brawley Stadium. Jacksonville State returning to Florence, Alabama for the first time since 1992. Bryant Wallace for Jacksonville State will kick off. He's from Florence, Alabama. Andre Little will watch it sail into the end zone. A touchback in North Alabama will trot out. Let's meet starting quarterback Blake Deaver. Brian, he got knocked out in the game one against Liberty, but he's back out there today. Yeah, good to see him be able to come back out there today. He's a big guy, 6'3", 257 pound, fifth year senior. He's a guy, again, that knows the offense and uh, knows the direction that Coach Willis and the uh, offensive staff want to go. Uh, they'll need to get going early here against this really stout Jacksonville State defense. Blake Deaver, his sixth game played at North Alabama, his fourth career start. North Alabama 0-1 on the season, Jacksonville State 1-1. Deaver, first pass of the game, complete to Cortez Hall, and Deaver actually completed three passes against Liberty, all three to Cortez Hall. Yeah, I like that play there. The first play, just an easy uh, throw out to the left side over there, kind of get your quarterback in rhythm, get him comfortable in the pocket. Let's talk about our nieces' pieces to success for North Alabama in this ball game. Now they want to avoid early mistakes, penalties, turnovers, and also get the football in the playmakers' hands. Parker Driggers checks into the ball game. That's who Deaver was looking for. Hit on the release, incomplete pass. Here's the first third down try. Now they got pressure on the backside of Blake Deaver there. He's taking some shots, as you mentioned. 
Got knocked out early in that Liberty game. He's a big guy, but you get hit from behind like that, that'll take its toll on you. The North Alabama coaching staff pleased with the third down effort against Liberty. Six of 14, that's 42.9%. We'll round up, call that 43. Can the Gamecock defense get off the field? First down to get is the 35. Jacoby Bird motions out. Deaver underneath to Driggers. Room to run. Parker Driggers, the red shirt freshman from Brantley, Alabama, picks up the first down. Great job by Deaver there, getting rid of the football. You see here they blitz off of that right side. Deaver throws it right where the blitz came from. Dr Driggers was wide open, turns it upfield and gets the first down. This North Alabama offense is led by four red shirt junior wide receivers, but Parker Driggers is emerging as a young playmaker. Driggers had the only touchdown against Liberty. First and 10 for North Alabama. Deaver rolling out. He'll have to throw this one away. Smothered up by Umstead Sanders. Yeah, another time here where Blake Deaver takes a pretty good shot there. Maybe held onto that one just a little bit too long. Had an underneath route open, but throws it away and lives to, to play again here. This is a Jacksonville State defense that has forced turnovers this year. A couple of interceptions, a couple of fumble recoveries. But the big thing, they've scored off those turnovers. Yes, they have. Their defense is, has, uh, defense has played opportune football here, returning two, uh, an interception and a fumble for touchdowns. Second and ten for Blake Deaver, trying to get it into Jacksonville State territory. Deep shot for Little. Just a little too much on that one. Incomplete pass. Here's a long third down coming up. And you mentioned third downs last uh, week or two weeks ago, I should say, for North Alabama, 43%. The thing you want to do here is convert this first down, keep the chains moving, get the football in Jacksonville State territory on this first possession. That was Jacquez Payton in on the coverage. So North Alabama has converted one third down try. They'll try to do it again. First down to get is the 42 on Jacksonville State side of the field. Gamecocks look to bring pressure. Deaver throws underneath, passes complete, surging ahead for the first down. That's the tight end, Corson Swan. Corson Swan, Ben right there showing some strength, dragging the pile with him. Corson Swan, 6'3", 223 pounds, he's another uh, of those big time tight ends that likes to catch the football and moves the chains there. North Alabama converting again on third down. We'll talk about both teams' tight ends. Trey Berry of Jacksonville State. Uh, both teams call their tight ends baby Gronks. Another third down conversion. North Alabama has it in Jacksonville State territory. Opening drive of this ball game. First rush, Jawan Howell tries to skirt it to the outside. Short pickup of two sets up second down. Ben, Jawan ha Howell is a guy that North Alabama wants to get going. They want him to get going in the running game. 18 carries, 102 yards all of last year. He's a guy that can carry the load, but he's got to get going and get this running game going, something that North Alabama has really struggled with in the past couple of years. Chris Hardy, the redshirt freshman, was there on the stop. Second and eight, quick screen out to Hall. Cuts back towards the blockers, a short pickup. Sets up a manageable third down and two after a pickup of about six. Big Noah Stern, you see him right there, number 74. Got that block on the outside and allowed Cortez Hall to turn it upfield. And again, the third, third down on this drive for North Alabama. Getting near field goal range here, but they want six. Eli Cazola checks in as the extra tight end. UNA two of two on third downs. Brian, is this four down territory? Are we in field goal range yet? Probably close to it, but I think it's four down territory. If they don't get it, I think you'll see them go for it. Deaver under center to Howell. Look at the wall at Gamecocks waiting on him. Marshall Clark, one of the first ones there. Yeah, they tried to get to the edge there. And you're exactly right. Marshall Clark closed it off and said, nope, not on my side. Now we'll see what North Alabama does here. And it looks like They'll keep the offense on the field. It's going to be about fourth and right at four. Long four. Officially a loss of one. 
First fourth down try for North Alabama in this game and on the season. Dexter Boyk in the motion man. Blitz comes, Deaver stands strong. Completion to Cortez Hall. Does he have enough for the first down? I think he does. It's right at the stick over there. Really depends on the spot, but I think it'll be a first down. Delayed blitz right there from Jacksonville State. Great job of Deaver hanging on to it and allowing Cortez Hall to get open, and he fights upfield for the first down. Move the chains. Deaver took a shot on that pass as well from Zach Woodard. First and 10 for North Alabama. Early movement, but they'll blow this one dead. Uh, defense made contact, number 99, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's Anthony Nesby, the redshirt sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia. Then you see here early on what North Alabama's doing with Blake Deaver, rolling him out, trying to elude some of this pressure that the Jacksonville State defense is putting on. They've come with a lot of different types of blitzes here on this first drive. It's a revamped North Alabama offensive line as well. Six transfers coming in this offseason. Six of the ten from last year's two deep for North Alabama are gone. So Deaver will have it first and five from the 24. Look at the big fella keeping it. He doesn't keep it too long. Ryan Gilmartin chases him down. Now that's just Deaver, Deaver reading the defense there and getting what he can off the play. Second down here after the penalty. One thing I'm noticing here with the defensive backs for Jacksonville State, they're giving a lot of room for these UNA receivers here on this near side. We'll see how that factors into today's game. Triggers the motion man. The flip forward breaks out of one tackle. Look at the speed down the boundary. Zach Warder chases him out, but not until after he has the first down. Yeah, you talked about the, the guy that Parker Driggers is becoming in this offense. He had a big fumble against Liberty two weeks ago, but bounced back from that and had a really good game against a strong Liberty defense. Parker Driggers, a redshirt freshman out of Brantley High School, he's becoming a factor here for this North Alabama offense. 12 plays on this drive. The Lions have covered 61 yards, and look at the clock churning. This is the opening drive of the game. Ron Thompson, the running back. The handoff will go to Thompson, greeted in the backfield. Olmstead Sanders, one of the first Gamecocks there. Ron Thompson, 5'6", 193 pounds, not the big guy in the backfield, but is blessed with quickness and can get to the edge. Has one career touchdown so far for the Lions. North Alabama behind the sticks, second and 11. A red zone possession for North Alabama on drive number one. Andre Little, the motion man, left to right. Deaver to the air, pressure comes. He's trying to break free, but he'll finally go down. Penalty flag Jaylen down Jalen Swain. As well. Yep. North Alabama signaling this is against Jacksonville State. Two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Holding, number seven defense. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 35 defense. That penalty is half the distance to the goal, carries the first down. What a big break for North Alabama. Ricky Samuel called for the hands to the face in North Alabama. You go from looking at a second, third, and long situation now to it's first and goal from the nine. And that's two big penalties so far in this drive for Jacksonville State. A penalty earlier made it first and five. Now this gives them a first down. Mistakes early for the Gamecocks. Play number 14 on the opening drive of the game. Who has the football? Deaver finally gave way to Ron Thompson who picks up a handful. A big hit from Nicario Harper, the Southern Miss transfer. I want to tell you what, Harper just laid the boom right there. Deaver and Thompson couldn't get together and figure out who was going to carry the football there. 
And now stoppage in place. It looks like Cameron Watson, the left guard for North Alabama, will check out. Cam Watson played every snap for North Alabama last week. Christian Barnes, Ben, is going to check into his place. He's a big left tackle right now, 6'4", 300 pounds. Second and goal now from the seven. North Alabama had three red zone trips against Liberty, but only came away with one score. And they can't afford to do that today. Handoff up the middle, Thompson. Hit right at the line of scrimmage. He might have picked up a yard. Now the Lions are going to have trouble running on that interior of that defensive line for Jacksonville State. 325 and 280 right in the middle with DeCorian West and Jackson Luttrell. Hard to get much penetration there. Big third down here for the Lions. North Alabama's converted a couple of third downs, two of three on this opening drive. One fourth down conversion, a couple of penalties aiding the drive as well. Parker Driggers in the backfield next to Deaver. Deaver on the run. L looking, finally, gets rid of it at the last second. Robert Johnson, the true freshman from Carrollton High School, chasing him down, and a penalty marker in the back of the end zone. Well, that's an interesting spot for a penalty. You would think right there it may be some kind of hold. Maybe in the secondary, who knows, we'll see. Holding, defense number 23. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. We'll replay second down. Third penalty, that's Colby Fuquay, a big play defender for Jacksonville State. Boy, the Gamecocks just continue to make mistakes here on this first drive. Ruling on the field is the passer fumbled the ball forward out of bounds when hit. Therefore, it does not carry an automatic first down. We'll replay third down after the penalty. So a replay of third down. Chris Willis looking for a further explanation, but their ruling Deaver fumbled it out of bounds. That may be something they'll take a look at, too. UNA head football coach Chris Willis, his fourth year leading this North Alabama program from the Division II ranks to Division I. Year three of the Division I transition. Some confusion right now, I think, between the officials as to whether they'll review it or not. Another look here, you see Deaver on the run. Well, that's close. I really just looking at that review right there. Great Have shot it. from the truck, and now they will review it. Running on the field, the passer fumbled the ball when hit. That, that play is under further review. So here's the question as we look at the review here in the booth is when his arm starts going forward, is the ball loose? We'll find out when we come back to Florence. North Alabama on the move, replay. We'll find out the answer when we return. Overturned, an incomplete pass, the rolling, and again, a tough break for Jacksonville State. North Alabama knocking on the door, now first and goal from the four. Yeah, with that penalty, that brings an automatic first down. So you're right, football just inside the four-yard line. North Alabama knocking on the door on this first drive. That's consisted of 56 yards, 51 of those through the air, five on the ground. Into the Wildcat, out of the timeout, it's Parker Triggers. He had the rushing touchdown last week, and look at him, stuffed at the line. This Gamecock defense said no. Anthony Nesby, one of the first ones there. Nesby, six foot one, 315 pound. You see him right in the middle there. And watch this, he's gonna come up and stop him right in his tracks. He lost about a half a yard on that play. Jacksonville State does not have a red zone stop this season. North Alabama will stay in the Wildcat. It's Driggers, the red shirt freshman again. He'll try the middle. Ziggs back, lunges ahead. He's down at the one. North Alabama ran that play quite a few times a couple of weeks ago at Liberty. 
player injury. And as there's an injury on the field right now. Gamecock down. What an opening drive this has been for North Alabama. It sure is a fantastic drive so far. Right down the field. Two of three on third down conversions. They converted a fourth down. 16 play drive so far. Well, if you're Coach Willis, that's exactly what you want to see from an offense that really got in a lot of trouble a couple of weeks ago at Liberty. Red zone woes against Liberty. North Alabama fell in the opener to Liberty. An FBS program. 28-7 to seven the score in that ball game. But talking with the UNA coaching staff this week, they were down 7 to nothing at the end of the first half, and they pinpointed four or five plays that they feel like really shot themselves in the foot. Well, they were right there in the game in the first half. I mean, it was just a, a really good half of football for North Alabama. That injury right there, Ben, for Jacksonville State was D.J. Coleman. Had a season-high seven tackles a couple of weeks ago at Florida State. Into his place comes to Corey Russell. North Alabama's moved the football on this drive, but they have had trouble running it. Seven rushing yards on a drive that's covered 74 yards. Deaver under center. He'll try to sneak it, and it's blown dead. Timeout. North Alabama. First charge timeout. So North Alabama forced to call the timeout. Our second break of this drive, North Alabama knocking on the door. We'll have the third down play when we return to Florence. <laughs> Opening drive still going third and one from the one yard line. North Alabama trying to punch it in. Blake Deaver hands off to Ron Thompson, and again, this Jacksonville State defensive line says no. North Alabama has had zero success up the middle. Nothing there. I mean, just the middle there with DeCorian West and Jackson Luttrell plugging the middle there. And big fourth down here. It looks like North Alabama will bring on the field goal team. All things considered for Jacksonville State, an 18-play drive. Look how much clock. This North Alabama offense chewed, and it's a field goal try. Sam Contorno owned for the chip shot. It's his birthday today. Joe Gurley will hold. Contorno's kick is on the way, and he drills it. North Alabama with an impressive opening drive, but the Gamecock defense comes through. Three to nothing early on. 18 plays, 73 yards. Nearly 10 minutes off the clock, but somehow Jacksonville State tightened up on the back end. Big drive, confidence builder for North Alabama that they can move the football on this Jacksonville State defense. But I consider that a win for the Gamecocks right there. The drive that North Alabama puts together and Jacksonville State holds it together and keeps them out of the end zone. Even with the penalties that Jacksonville State had on that drive, they were to keep, able to keep the Lions out of the end zone. Now the Lions defense needs to come out and stand just like uh, Jacksonville State's. Jacksonville State playing today without head football coach John Gross. One and one on the season, coming off of a win over Mercer. Opened up against Florida State, a game the Gamecocks led early on. But most of all, Brian, Jacksonville State has to be looking around saying this is football weather oh. after the downpour last weekend in Jacksonville. <laughs> You're exactly right. I, I don't know that you could ask for a better day as far as football weather goes. A little crisp in the air here today, a little breeze blowing. I think it's just perfect. I got up here in the booth earlier today and had to throw the jacket on. This is, I'm loving it. Sam Contorno, who just kicked the field goal, set to kick off. Yule Gowdy back deep to return for Jacksonville State, a dangerous return man. Contorno trying to line up the Lions. Contorno's kick is a pooch. And it's dropped. Ball is loose. Uriah West dropped it. He was able to get on it, and the Gamecocks will have it. First and 10 when we come back. 5.07 to go in the first. North Alabama leads 3 to nothing. Will Evans, I just want to remind you to wear your mask while sitting in the stands. Thanks for coming today and roar lines. Here come the Gamecocks, the offense for the first time this afternoon. Zarek Cooper 
leads this group. And Brian, as Cooper comes out, chasing some records today, he has a new group of weapons surrounding him. Yeah, this is a relatively new group at receiver. Some guys that still have to prove themselves. Cooper one touchdown away from tying the school record for touchdowns in a career. He does not have one this season. He'll tuck it and run. Tackled by Will Evans after a scramble of about five. Well, that's where Zary Cooper can hurt you. He can pull it down and turn it upfield in a heartbeat. Clemson transfer, a preseason All-American. He is a dangerous guy at quarterback. Our niece's pieces to success for Jacksonville State. For Jacksonville State, so they've got to keep Cooper clean, keep that jersey clean, and rally for Coach Cross, who is not here today. Jared Scott, the motion man, one of the new receivers for Cooper. Here's a toss out wide. Leading rusher, Josh Samuel. He'll pick up one. Tackled by Mike Boykin, a transfer from Tennessee State. Yeah, Mike Boykin chased him down on the edge out there. Boykin played 10 games for Louisville back in 2018. As you mentioned, transferred here from Tennessee State. And he is a fantastic defensive tackle, 6'6", 290. North Alabama was two of four on third down tries on that 19-play drive. Can Jacksonville State convert the first try here? Incomplete pass. Too far out in front of Josh Samuel. And a big stop there for the North Alabama defense. And the big thing on this that I take away from it is Jacksonville State's defense is about to go back out on the field. They were out there for a long time earlier. This JSU offense scored on their first five possessions last week. And they'll punt on drive number one. Here's Preston Knight. Jack Peavy. He's back to return. Jack Peavy's father played on the Jacksonville State National Championship team back in 1992. Scott Peavy, now a head coach in Georgia. Penalty marker comes down. Coach Peavy, as he is now, is in attendance today. Ball start. Offense, number 28. Fourth penalty against penalty. Jacksonville Fourth State. Down. And they're adding up quickly. Please reset so we mentioned the game Coach, clock to four uh, minutes, Coach please. Gross not here today. And I don't know if he's watching or how he's watching the game, but I know he's probably not happy with the four early penalties. Offense goes three and out, four penalties that aided North Alabama on the 19-play drive. Peavy can get off any kind of return here. The Lions should have great field position starting the second drive. Preston Knight, uh, one of the handful of graduates on this Jacksonville Please State reset. team. The game clock. Not sure what the, the delay minutes, on the please. field is at the moment. Now we're ready to punt this football away. Knight averaging 42 yards per punt on the year, and he shanks this one. Takes a oh. Jacksonville State hop, however. And look at that baby roll. Downed inside the 20. Hey, it doesn't matter how it gets there, just as long <laughs> as it gets there. Well, I tell you what, Jacksonville State needed some kind of break, and they got it right there. That one bounced right over the head of PV. And football rests now inside the 20-yard line, but North Alabama coming back on offense right here. 19 plays on the opening drive. Longest drive last year for North Alabama, 11. Blake Deaver, 6 of 9, 51 yards through the air on drive number one. I'd be interested to see what North Alabama does here with the running game. Really nothing going on that first drive. Six rushing yards compared to 51 through the air. And we talked about it earlier. That running game is something that North Alabama really trying to get going. Fans, please stick around see how much they try it here on this second drive. North Alabama, 63 yards on the ground, week one against Liberty. This drive will begin from the 19. Deaver back to pass. A low pass. He might have one-hopped that one to Jacoby Bird. He did. Incomplete. Brings up second down. Yeah, I think Deaver just short-armed that football a little bit. Blake Deaver threw three passes against Liberty before exiting. Went through concussion protocol. Unit coaching staff very anxious to get him out there today once he was cleared. They want to see what the 
Six foot three, 257. Flamethrower can do. Triggers will be in the backfield here on second and 10. Now he'll exit. Penalty markers start. fly. False start Offense will be the call. 76, five yard penalty, second down. Second and 10 turns into second and 15. Yeah, North Alabama back here in the shadow of their own goal post. The playbook shrinks a little bit. Don't want to try to anything too exotic here. A little less of an option that you have here as far as the playbook goes. Deaver will split out to the left, so it's Driggers in the Wildcat. Driggers will hand off to Thompson, trying to stretch it out. He's swallowed up by Zach Woodard. A sideline here for North Alabama, I think wanting a face mask. We'll get a good look at it here. Yeah, definitely should have been a face mask call there, it appears, on that replay. What are the leading tackler a season ago out of Thomasville, Alabama? 96 stops. This is a Jacksonville State defense that has a ton of playmakers. Oh, they do. They are loaded at playmaker. And right in the nickel position, Kobe Fuqua had an interception return against Florida State. He's a standout. Third and 16, North Alabama, two of four on third downs today. Thompson. Catches the pass underneath, and another big hit from the Gamecocks, Nicario Harper. Harper came flying through there. He's also a playmaker in that secondary. And it'll bring up a fourth down here for the Lions. A defense that had given up yards on that first drive. Sometimes you need your playmakers to step up, and Jacksonville State got it on that possession. Absolutely did. Now Jacksonville State has a chance to get good field position here. Early on the punt for the Lions. So North Alabama lost one yard on that drive. Joe Gurley gets a high kick. Fair catch called for at the 40. And here comes Jacksonville State one more time. Jason Jones called for the fair catch. Hercules Tires is the official tire of the Big South Conference and for over 65 years has been providing tires with unbeatable quality at an unmatched value. Whatever the vehicle and whatever the terrain, Hercules Tires invites you to ride on our strength. For a retailer near you, visit HerculesTires.com. Jacksonville State, good field position here after the three and out on possession number one. Zarek Cooper out of the backfield to West. West with a block. He has the first down around midfield. Stopped by Alonzo Creighton. Great job just executing that play to perfection. Swing it out to the right. Perfect pass you see there from Cooper right in the bread basket. Great blocks on the edge. Turns it upfield, gets the first first down of the game for Jacksonville State. Cooper's first completion. This Gamecock offense can move the football. Scored on all five first half possessions a week ago. That pass a little behind for the intended receiver, Dave Russell. And Dave Russell led all receivers in that FSU game. He had seven catches, 74 yards. That one just a little bit behind. Brings up second and 10 from the North Alabama 48. The give to West. Look at West charging ahead down to the 44. I like the way Uriah West runs that football, puts the head down, just a big guy, gets it up in there. Not trying to do anything too fancy with it. We'll see a three-man rotation at running back today between Pat Jackson, Josh Samuel, and Uriah West. And head coach John Gross says they're all three very similar. All three very talented. Can Jacksonville State convert the third down try? They need to get down to the 38. Cooper steps up. He'll run for it. He'll slide down after picking it up. Kyrie Fields helps him down. And Cooper a little slow to get up. Yeah, Cooper took a shot right there. 
I don't know if his head bounced off the turf. We'll get a look at it here. I think it did. Kyrie Fields came in. A little late. Yep. Jacksonville State first and 10. Moving in after three and out on their first possession. Both Jackson and West are in the backfield with Cooper. You can feel Cooper getting in rhythm here. The gift will go to Pat Jackson, the newcomer from Mississippi Delta Community College. A good push down to the 32. And Pat Jackson, second on this team in rushing in this young season. Five foot nine, 220 pounds, as you mentioned, out of Mississippi. Now, he's a guy, not a huge guy, but he can lower his head and push it up in there as well. And that will bring the opening frame to a close. North Alabama leads it three to nothing. Jacksonville State driving. It's the 48th meeting between the Gamecocks and the Lions. Back to Florence after this. We open up the second quarter. North Alabama, three, Jacksonville State, nothing. Gamecocks on the move. Benjamin Ray, Brian Neese welcoming you back in to Brawley Stadium here in sunny Florence, Alabama. North Alabama outgained Jacksonville State, 21 plays to three in the first quarter. There's Trey Berry. Big playmaker, first time we've called his name today. Yes, and he is absolutely a playmaker. Big guy, 6'7", 245 pounds. He is a senior, leads this team in receiving yards. You see there, he's the underneath route. And gets the first down as K.J. Smith brings him down. With all the new weapons around Zarek Cooper, Trey Berry, he's the guy he knows yep. and trusts. First and 10 from the 23. Cooper in rhythm, West. Spinning up the middle out of one tackle. Jacob Cummings there to take him down. P.J. Mixon, the left tackle. Out of Montgomery, a little slow to get up. And look at this, center Zach Cangelosi, a newcomer, he has to exit. Tyrese Slocum listed as the backup, and he'll check in. On second down. Jared Scott, the motion man. West. Great initial push. He's still going. These Gamecock running backs do not go down. Now they keep the legs churning. That time not a lot of running room. You see a little extracurricular activity there. Wallace Cowens Jr. Mixing it up a little bit. And a penalty marker comes down. You gotta remember, this is a rivalry game. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number four on the offense. And this goes against Jacksonville State. That's the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul by number penalty. four. Third down. Against Jacksonville State. JSU bench yelling to the field, calm down. And again, you've got a manageable third and four, and it's going to turn into third and long right here. Penalties have been a problem here in this first half for the Gamecocks. They're calling it third and 18. The first down to get is down around the 13. Cooper, time to throw. Overthrows his man, Jared Scott. And they're still getting tangled up afterwards down on the field. Yeah, that was Michael Shaddix, the right guard. And then for North Alabama, I didn't pick up a number. Terrell Townsend getting a mouthful from head coach Chris Willis. And Jacksonville State will keep the offense out. Could we see a pooch kick from Cooper on fourth down? No, he will go for it. Cooper, penalty marker comes down. Make it two. He'll keep it. He'll spin. And Will Evans is there to clean him up. The battle in the trenches is getting tight. And it's Michael Shaddix again, who is probably going to be called for a hold on this play. He was the one on the previous play that was in the little extracurricular activity. And I think that's just emotion coming out, something that he's got to control. North Alabama yelling for the defense to get off. Two fouls on the play, both by the same team, holding 
number 50 and holding number 70. Ten yard penalty, third down. Ref Mike down right oh, now, but oh, we do know it's holding. It was a hold against Michael Shadows. Correction, Shattuck's. the penalty would be declined. In the backfield, and it was an obvious hold. There was no doubt about it. North Alabama is going to decline the penalty and get the football back. It has not been a great start for Jacksonville State as far as mistakes and really mental mistakes uh, as well here. They've got to get it cleaned up over on that sideline. Hey, we'll step away from Florence. North Alabama football when we return, leading three to nothing. It's a rivalry Saturday in Florence, Alabama. North Alabama with the football, leading Jacksonville State three to nothing. Here's Blake Deaver at quarterback, seven of 11, 56 yards. He wants to take a deep shot. It's not there. He tries to throw underneath to Boykin. And again, he, he gets hit after he releases it. He's taking some shots. He is, and the reason for that shot is there was great coverage downfield from Jacksonville State. The secondary did a great job. You'll see here, Deaver has time to throw the football, but just nobody was open. Deaver looking, looking, running through his checks, and then just has to throw it away. If you like football in the trenches, you're probably enjoying the physicality between the two linemen groups up front, if you will. You see Jacksonville State here going to rush three. See what kind of pressure they can get on Deaver. Second and 10, Juwan Howell, the running back. It's a give to Howell. Elaine on the right side. He has the first down, chased out of bounds. Number 24, Juwan Howell on the carry for the Lions. That play is good for another North Jacquez Payton there to chase him down finally. Corson, or Corson Swan giving a seal block on that outer edge. And then Howell just turns it up, gets the first down. Really good run there by Jawan Howell. Really one of the longest runs we've seen from North Alabama today. UNA had eight yards on the ground prior to that 12-yard scamper. Back to the ground with Howell. That time he stuffed, no gain. And again, a little extra pushing and shoving after that play is over. Tippers flaring still, got to keep those calm. I kind of get the feeling here that North Alabama, not luring Jacksonville State to sleep, but I, I think you may see them take a shot here at some point. Deaver alone. Gamecocks rush four. Goes underneath, there's Howell, the running back. Out across the 40, brings up a short third down try. Good little curl around out there from Jawan Howell. Third down for the Lions. Making the catch and bringing up a third down here. It'll be about third and three. Alabama transfer, Markel Benton there on the stop. North Alabama, two of five on third downs. And third down conversions, the key on that opening 18 play drive. Look at the line change for Jacksonville State right here. That's Parker Driggers in the backfield. Now he'll exit. Deaver completes the pass. Jacoby Bird stays on his feet. Finally cleaned up by Nicario Harper. Jacoby Bird making that catch out on the edge there. Deaver saw where the blitz was coming from. You'll see it, picks it up here, then throws out to the right. Great catch. Gets away from that initial tackle there by Jacquez Payton. Jacoby Bird now a reception in 19 straight games, 98 career catches for the red shirt junior. Another first down pickup. Again, Driggers in the backfield with Deaver. Pressure comes, Deaver steps up and he'll go down. The pocket collapsed. Ricky Samuel was there. Time out. Game on the field as well here. Looks to be Robert Johnson, the nose tackle, back up out of Carrollton, Georgia. This Jacksonville State defense has had seven first-time starters this season. 
They've battled some injuries, had some players step up. But it's a defense when it is needed to get stops or plays, they found the answer. Yeah, you're exactly right. At, at big times, they have stepped up. North Alabama leads it three to nothing back after this on ESPN3. Football here in Brawley Stadium, a rivalry Saturday. Two teams separated by just about 150 miles. North Alabama leads Jacksonville State three to nothing. Second and 10 for the Lions. UNA scored on the opening drive, an 18 play drive. Looking to do it again. Over the middle, Deaver to the tight end. Corson Swan into Jacksonville State territory. Corson Swan, eight receptions all of last year. And Deaver just throws a strike across the middle. Great protection from his offensive line. Finds Swan across the middle. Another first down here for the Lions. This UNA offense is moving the football. Yes, they are. 28 plays already. Deaver to the ground to Howell. Howell trying to stand strong. Markel Benton, one of a handful of Gamecocks. Jacksonville State stout on the run today. Yes, they are. Just not a lot of room there to run, just to be honest with you, up the middle. Maybe a yard and a half gain there, but these offense, or excuse me, these defensive linemen, Umstead Sanders, DeCorian West, Jackson Luttrell, DJ Coleman, who went out with an injury earlier is back in the game. Good to see that. But even the guys that are behind the front four definitely have size. Jackson Luttrell back in the lineup after missing last week's game against Mercer. Driggers motions out of the backfield. Deaver to Dexter Boykin, his favorite target. Boykin rolling around. Darius Joyner tackles him, and Dexter Boykin, one of these redshirt junior wide receivers, has a reception in every game he's ever played in. Now he is a fantastic receiver, runs his routes really well, runs them really crisp, gets the football in his hands. He knows to go north and south with it. Now over 1,200 yards in his career. He's just a fantastic playmaker and just a junior out of Fairfield High School. He's got another year with the Lions. North Alabama, three of six on third down tries. A short third down and three. Need to make it down to the 32. Deaver will give to Thompson, trying the right side. DJ Coleman there to clean him up. The initial hit from Chris Hardy. And this may be a situation where you're in four down territory here. We were talking about that a couple of drives ago. You see the penetration there from the Gamecock defense, nothing there. They just swallow up. Ron Thompson, fourth down here in about five, maybe six. North Alabama converted a fourth down try on the opening drive. The only time they have gone for it in this short two game season now. They're calling it fourth and five. Need to make it down to the 32. Gamecocks showing blitz up the middle. Four come. Deaver across the middle, pass broken up. He was looking for Parker Driggers. George Steele there to say no. That's a really good job by George Steele, not getting the pass interference right across the middle. Comes in and knocks it away, George Steele. A red shirt sophomore out of Trustville makes the play and Jacksonville State gets the football back. Each team has gone for it on fourth down. UNA one of two now, Jacksonville State 0 for one. And here come the Gamecocks and Zarek Cooper. And Brian, they've moved the football. It, it's just been themselves, it seems like, holding themselves back. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've gotten in their own way here. And they've, they've got to corral a little bit, bit of this energy that they've got right here. They've got to control it, control the tempers a little bit. Things aren't going their way. Just settle down and play the football that, that they know how to play. Zarek Cooper, 55 straight passes without a touchdown. Here he goes to the air, steps up, takes a shot, has Barry. He comes back for it, and there's a big play the Gamecocks needed. And he's the guy that Zarek Cooper looks for. He's a big guy. We talked about him earlier, 1,200 receiving yards. Cooper just steps up in the pocket, finds him, throws downfield, a strike, and a big first down here for the Gamecocks. Trey Barry's second reception. And Jacksonville stayed in business thanks to one play. First and 10 from the UNA 31. To the ground game, it's Pat Jackson. Terrell Townsend there to help take him down after a pickup of three to bring up second down. Gain of 32 to Trey Berry. 
And look there, they just put the head down and pick up three, four yards on that play. Just, just doesn't sound like uh, a lot, and it's not uh, pretty by any means, but four yards, you'll take that on every play. Jacksonville State got in the red zone last time they had the football, but some penalties knocked them out of it. Here's the give to Jackson, trying to stretch it out. K.J. Smith, the Big South Scholar Athlete of the Year, getting physical right there. I love the way K.J. Smith plays. You mentioned physical. He's not afraid to get in there and mix it up. Comes up with a big stop. And now third down for Jacksonville State, one of three so far today. Only down a field goal here, about midway through the second quarter. Need to make it down to the 21. Cooper, three of six today, 54 yards. Gamecocks on the ground. That's close. Pat Jackson will have it. Again, another physical run. He laid the wood there. Jimmy Ogle, the acting head coach today. How much trust does that show your offensive line on a big third down that, hey, boys just clear the way and let him go get it. That was Jacob Cummings getting him by the ankles or he might have kept going. Cooper, timing throw, incomplete. Looking for Dave Russell on the outside. A little bit wide there with that throw. To bring up a second down here for the Gamecocks. Eleven carries, 54 yards on the ground, 54 yards through the air. Is Eric Cooper needing one touchdown pass to tie the school record of 61 in a career held by Ed Lett. Throws across the middle and there it is. He ties the Gamecock record to Quan Charleston, a 19 yard scoring strike for the Gamecocks. What a great route there by Quan Charleston. And as you mentioned, Cooper throws a strike right across the middle, right into the arms, into the hands. Look at this throw here by Cooper. It doesn't get any better than that. A great route, and Jacksonville State on the board for the first time today. Number 61, he's been looking for that one for a handful yes. of games. It yes. was 57 straight passes without a touchdown for the playmaker. Jacksonville State takes the lead, the extra point on the way. And it's up and in, new ball game in Florence. Zarek Cooper ties history in Jacksonville in the Gamecocks lead North Alabama seven to three back after this. There he is, he's tied Ed Lett for most passing touchdowns in a career at Jacksonville State. A 14-yard strike to Quan Charleston. That was his first touchdown reception. Zarek Cooper is third year at Jacksonville State, rewriting the record books. And a slow start in Jacksonville State finds themselves in the lead. Yeah, with all the penalties and all the mistakes they've had, you're right, they find themselves leading by four here. Pooch kick from Bryant Wallace. Trouble, Andre Little will watch it bounce and go out of bounds, worth noting. Last year's matchup, Jacksonville State did the same kick thing out of and covered it. Contained. The ball be placed North at Alabama the 35 yard that line. Go out. First down. And here comes this UNA offense. 35 yard line right now, has seven to uh, three. And given the way this game is gone, North Alabama probably feels like they should have some more points on the board. Oh, they absolutely should. Uh, you're right. And they, they need to need a drive here. Need to get going here, get things cranked up. Played really well in that first quarter. Had a good first quarter a couple of weeks ago on the road at Liberty. Find something here and get your team in the end zone. Since running 18 plays on the opening drive, North Alabama's run 13 roughly on the last two. Best starting field position of the day right here from the 35. Blake Deaver, 11 of 17, 85 yards, and he stood strong in the pocket. That's Jacoby Bird in the backfield with Deaver. Pass out to Boykin. Trying to stiff arm his way to a first down. Jacquez Payton fights him out of bounds. Pick up her nine of 10. What are they gonna say? That's a pickup of 10, a first down. Ben, look at this throw. That is a long throw. It looks like an easy throw. The man was wide open over here on the edge. 
That is a long way to throw the football, and it was right on the money to Dexter Boykin. Good throw there from Deaver. This North Alabama offense, nine first downs in this first half. Here's a penalty marker. 12 men in, in formation, five-yard penalty, first down. Substitution infraction was the original indication by the officials. Now they're going to talk about it. And they will wave it off. There is no penalty on the play. Remains first and 10 to the Lions. First and 10 from the 45. Jacksonville State will get the football back to start the second half. Can North Alabama answer the Gamecocks score? Jawan Howell checks in in the backfield with Deaver. Now with the leading rusher, five carries, 15 yards for this UNA offense. Pressure coming. Deaver gets it off in time. He finds Dexter Boykin. Boy, DJ Coleman was there. I'll tell you what, I think we're watching Blake Deaver grow up before our eyes here today. He stood in that pocket and knows the shot's coming and delivers a strike to Dexter Boykin. I love the way that Deaver is staying in there. Watch him here. He knows the hit's coming. Stays in the pocket, absorbs the blow, fires a strike out here on the edge. Into Gamecock territory once again. Blake Deaver making his fourth career start at North Alabama in his second season. Takes a shot for Cortez Hall. Can't bring it in. The all-conference, Yule Gowdy was there. And a marker on the play as well here, and I think it's against North Alabama. There's a penalty marker on the field. In the area of holding. Deaver backing up in holding. frustration. Holding, offense number 72, 10-yard penalty, first down. Holding against the Lions. Holding the call. And that backs North Alabama up the wrong way. I want to go back to the coverage there from Yule Gowdy. You can't defend that play any better. He was step for step with the receiver. Pretty good throw there by Blake Deaver, but even better coverage from that redshirt junior corner. Asked this week about the matchups, pass game coordinator Tyler Rice said his team would need to win the one-on-one -on -one matchups. That time, Jacksonville State won it. Deaver on first and long, throws nearly intercepted. Jaquez Payton had visions of six. Deaver just a little bit late with that throw. Rolls out to the right, and there he is. You see, he was open just for a second. Jacoby Bird turned defensive back right there. Sure did. Second and 20 now. Deaver steps up. He'll tuck it and run. And look at the big stick coming from Marshall Clark. He said, oh, hello, Mr. Deaver. Deaver. <laughs> that is two big boys locking horns right there. And Deaver stopped, and <laughs> I'll tell you what, watch this big boy lick right here from Clark. Hey, Clark listed 6'2", Tim. Deaver, 6'3", 257. <laughs> A long third down try for North Alabama. Three of seven. They need to make it all the way down to the 33. Jacksonville State fakes the pressure. Deaver has to step up. Steps out of Umstead Sanders. Deaver on the run has the tight end course and swam. Darius Joyner rides him out of bounds, but that's a big first down pickup. Again, Blake Deaver just going through his progressions. Eludes the defensive player there. You see Deaver here. He comes up, gets tripped up a little bit. Stays balanced. And see Swan break open down the field for a huge first down for the Lions. North Alabama now three of seven on third down conversions. 
Corson Swan's third reception in this ball game. He had eight catches all of last year. First and 10 for North Alabama. Deaver will run once again. This time he'll slide across the 25. I'll tell you what, Deaver may not be a guy that when he gets out of the pocket is going to get you a lot of yards, but he's a guy that can elude a second and 15, second and 16. He can make the first guy miss and get what he can. Gets a yard here, maybe a yard and a half. Chris Hardy chased him down. Two minutes to go in this first half. What a first half it has been. It has been a good one. Does it feel like a rivalry game in state? Yes, it does. Deaver back to the air. Quick throw, who else? The safety blanket, Corson Swan. That'll be close to a first down. I think he'll be a yard short. Corson Swan's coming out party here today Swan. against Jacksonville State. Of course, we've known for a while that he is a reliable tight end, used a lot in the blocking scheme, but coming out here today, four catches. Now a big third down again for the Lions. Two timeouts, clock running inside of 90 seconds in the red zone. Third and one from the 17. Juwan Howell, the tailback. He'll try to run for it, and again, Jacksonville State surging ahead. Umstead Sanders, the Florida transfer, has the third down stop. Timeout. Jacksonville State, first Jacksonville charge timeout. State calls for the timeout, and we'll take a break with them. North Alabama driving, Jacksonville State out in front, back after this from Florence. One oh six to go in the opening half, fourth and one. North Alabama with the football, offense on the field. UNA one of two this afternoon on fourth down tries. Jawan Howell trying to pick up one yard. Umstead Sanders and company can't stop him. He signals first down this time. How about that? Really nothing up the middle, but Jawan Howell sneaks through and gets that first down. I thought for sure he was stopped. Look at the second effort. Got to be mindful of the clock here under a minute. From the 15 now. Chris Willis won't seven. Deaver steps up, he'll take off. Still going, uses the size to take it down inside the five. And that'll move the sticks first and goal from the five. North Alabama, 37 seconds, two timeouts. Clock running here, 33. One of one in the red zone today with a field goal. Screen out to Bird. Jacoby Bird still on his feet. A great stop. That's DJ Coleman. Timeout, North Alabama. 22 seconds left. If DJ Coleman's not there, Jacoby Bird has six. Timeout will be 30 seconds. playing right now. He's not right there. A great block upfield by Cortez Hall. You want to mention that. When these guys get upfield and make good blocks, they got to get mentioned. So this is the first time Jacksonville State has been to Brawley Stadium since December 12, 1992. That season, the Gamecocks won three games in Brawley Stadium, two over North Alabama, one time over Pittsburgh State, 17-13 to win the national championship. Now, first meeting as Division I programs for North Alabama and Jacksonville State inside of Brawley, JSU won last year's matchup. North Alabama trying to return the favor, but you talked to UNA Athletic Director Mark Linder, JSU, AD Greg Seitz, a UNA grad. They want this game played every year. Oh, and I think that's great. I want this game played every year as well. It, it's a game that uh, you see the interest in the crowd here today. Great crowd on hand here. Big game, big rivalry. So Deaver will split out wide. Here's Parker Triggers, UNA's leading rusher on the season. He'll keep it up the middle. He has the touchdown. North Alabama goes back out in front. Parker Driggers straight up the middle, right behind Ryan Thompson. And the Lions take the lead. Boy, Parker Driggers is really becoming an integral part of this North Alabama offense, especially in the goal line. Look at this right here. He's got Ryan Thompson right ahead of him. 
think he had to go get his mouthpiece. It, <laughs> he may have. It was clear sailing into the end zone. The swinging gate, North Alabama answering the Jacksonville State touchdown. We got one more half to go, and oh, I can't wait. I know. Sam Contorno on his birthday. The extra point is up and through. New score, North Alabama leads it 10 to seven. We've got 19 seconds left in this opening half. In-state rivalry game, and both coaches talking this week saying that, hey, this doesn't have the rivalry feel of the 80s and the 90s, but we know it will get there once again. Oh, it is definitely going to build back. And, you you know, in the first half here, in the first quarter, you can see some tempers flaring. These guys know each other. We were talking in the break while ago. Trey Berry and, and uh, Corson Swan went to high school together. These guys know each other. They've been playing against each other, a lot of them in high school. Uh, a lot of them were recruited to these two schools together. And so it's a rivalry that can build back really quickly, and I'm excited to see it continue. Corson Swan, a 24-yard reception on that drive. Keeping it alive, a big third down catch. Trey Berry had a long of 32. Spanish Fort tight ends representing today in Brawley. Spanish Fort getting some love here today. Those two have been the main offensive threads in this game so far. 19 seconds to go here. See what Jacksonville State can dial up. Sam Contorno, the birthday boy. He plays baseball at UNA as well. Favorite band, Tornado the Beatles. Yeah. The Lions. The pooch kick. Fair catch called for. 19 seconds left in this first half. Jacksonville State trails by three. Two timeouts. Uh, do you consider a deep shot with Zarek Cooper? Maybe if you get something on first down, you might want to look at something here. You got a little time, uh, or timeouts, I should say. Not much time, 19 first seconds. For the Gamecocks from the really, all of that depends on what happens on first down here. And Coach Willis on the sideline signaling for his safeties to scoot back. Nope, they're going to take a knee here. Cooper in the victory formation. A couple of players sharing some parting thoughts. It's been a tight one. The 48th meeting between North Alabama and Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks in Florence for the first time since 1992. And it's North Alabama out in front, 10 to 7. Hey, we'll be back with the Geico Halftime Report. This is the Big South Conference Game of the Week. Brought to you by Geico. Do-Right calls up Kathy Clarinet on the phone. And he asks if he can come over for a visit. Kathy Clarinet replies, of course not, you silly feline. Welcome into the Geico Halftime Report. Your halftime stats, the tail of the paper. Brian, immediately time of possession leaps out at you. Yeah, go to the very bottom there. 22-26 for North Alabama. Seven and change for Jacksonville State. Also first downs. North Alabama with that time of possession picking up 13 first downs. Uh, not a lot of rushing yards between the two teams, but I'll tell you what, what a great first half of football it's been. Jacksonville State settled down after some early mistakes, got on the board with a touchdown, and then North Alabama right before the half answered and goes up 10 to seven. A three-point halftime lead for the home team at North Alabama, but we've got one more half to go here in Florence. It's the 48th meeting between North Alabama and Jacksonville State, and you're watching the Big South Conference Game of the Week brought to you by Geico. Welcome back to the Geico Halftime Report. Benjamin Ray with you inside the Lion Vision Studios. While North Alabama and Jacksonville State are playing for the 48th time all time, we welcome in Jerry Hill, a member of the UNA Athletic Hall of Fame, a four-year member of the football program from 1977 to 1980. Jerry, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. Shoot, anytime. I really I appreciate you having me on. Right off the bat, what's it like for you seeing Jacksonville State not only pop back up on North Alabama's schedule, but also return to Brawley Stadium? Man, I, I think it's awesome. You know, you go back to the to the old GSC where you had UNA, Jacksonville, Troy, Mississippi College. I, I just uh, 
man, I'm excited myself. I can't wait. Let's talk football in the Hill family. Now, your dad played at North Alabama from 1950 to 1953. Went on to play for the Chicago Bears where he was rookie of the year, NFL MVP. You had a great career at North Alabama. You're both in the Athletic Hall of Fame. You were drafted by the Washington football team in 1981. What was football like in the Hill family growing up? Well, it was just a way of life. You know, uh, I was very fortunate, you know, people – don't believe me when I tell him my dad, you know, he, he never, you know, really encouraged me or forced me to play football. You know, it was just being in an athletic family, I just sort of grew up playing football, basketball, baseball, I ran track, four sport letterman in, in high school. So it was, it was really just a way of life. He, uh, whatever I decided to do, he was always very supportive, but you know, he never really pushed me. Hey, you need to play football. You need to play football. It just happened naturally just because that was a way of life growing up in our family. And, you know, I had four sisters. I was the only male in the family. And we're, we're still all big football fanatics, all of us, our whole family. So it's just a way of life growing up. Next, let's talk about perhaps one of the most memorable plays in UNA football history. 1980 season finale, North Alabama versus Jacksonville State in Jacksonville, Alabama. You posted five catches. 187 yards and a score, the biggest of which, the 87-yard pass from Fred Riley down the sideline. You catch it, take it in for the score to give UNA the 35-28 win. UNA would win the first conference championship in school history, first NCAA playoff appearance in school history. Take us back to that play. What are your memories? Well, it was just it was just phenomenal afternoon. Uh, you know, we, we – we had played probably our best game that we had played the whole year. You know, of course, Jacksonville State was a big favorite because they'd won the conference a couple of years in a row. And we knew we had to win that game or we wouldn't get a bid to the, to the playoffs. So, you know, we probably played the best game we played all year. Uh, we had a two-touchdown lead late in the third quarter. And then, of course, they had a great quarterback named Ed Layett that went on the Canadian League and broke all kind of records. Well, he got hot, came back, tied it up. I guess it's probably about 30 seconds left. And, we were facing a third long, and what we were really trying to do, we had an All-American place kicker named Nelson McMurray. And, you know, we knew if we could cross the 50-yard line, we knew that we had a chance. So we, we called a play. Uh, Coach Crow called the play, and it was really designed to go to uh, Mike Gilly. You know, I, just, I would just clear out the corner and hope the safety would take me, and Gilly would ran a, a, a deep corner route in behind me and hope we could get it to him where – We'd be in field goal range. Well, they had a mix-up coverage, and I got behind the corner, and Fred laid that thing out there. Just one of those things that happened, you know. Wasn't really playing. Of course, Fred had to read to look deep and look short. He did a great job, and you know, it just it was just magical. You know, I won't ever forget it. Probably probably the most memorable moment I've I've had in in my whole football career. Yeah. Certainly fans of Jacksonville State and North Alabama all remember that play. Jerry Hill, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, and go Lions. We'll take a time out on the Geico Halftime Report. More coverage to come on the... Back here with the Geico Halftime Report. North Alabama leading Jacksonville State by three. Let's take a look at some first half highlights. And North Alabama opened up the game with a big long drive. Capped off by this Sam Contorno field goal from 19 yards out. Yeah, Jacksonville State's defense bended but didn't break. Got the Lions to a field goal. Jacksonville State to the ground early on. 52 yards rushing in that first half. A lot of hard fault yards. Yeah, Jacksonville State got in their own way a little bit there in that first quarter. Cooper, a big strike there across the middle. Gave Jacksonville State their first lead. Quan Charleston now becomes the ninth different Gamecock to catch a touchdown pass from Zarek Cooper that tied the school record. And here's the final touchdown of the first half. Parker Triggers from Brantley, Alabama, his second rushing touchdown of the season. North Alabama out in front by three. We've got one more half to go. The 48th meeting between North Alabama and Jacksonville State. Second half coming up next on the Geico Halftime Report.
Great crowd on hand for this one. 50% capacity inside of Brawley Stadium. I'm not sure what the final attendance number is. They were expecting a, a crowd between five, six, seven thousand, seven thousand, the maximum allowed, and they were treated to a great game in the first half. Benjamin Ray and Brian Neese welcoming you back to Brawley Stadium. And Brian, let's talk some second half adjustments. We'll start with Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks on the road without head coach John Gross trailing by three. What do you want to see in this second half? Well, looking back at what we talked about in the first half, uh, as far as the Neese's pieces goes, keep Cooper clean. They've done that for the most part. He hasn't been on the ground a whole lot. And then rallied behind Coach Gross. You know, if he was here, he would have been in their ear in that locker room at halftime, getting them fired up, getting the troops fired up. Somebody else has to take that role and kind of become the, the rally point for this team, getting them ready to go in the second half. North Alabama, a 10-7 lead. The Lions dominating time of possession. How do they keep it up for 30 more minutes? It's going to be a battle. This, this Jacksonville State defense is really good. They've got playmakers all over the field at defense. One name that we really haven't mentioned a whole lot is that nickelback, Kobe Fuqua. He's been a dynamic playmaker in the first couple of games for Jacksonville State. Had an interception return for a touchdown against Florida State. Uh, that's the team's only interception this year. Uh, they definitely need him to get cranked up in the second half. Jacksonville State will get the football first, trailing 10 to 7. Through two games this year, the Gamecocks have scored 10 total points in the second half, three against Florida State, seven against Mercer. Need to note, though, Mercer played in a the pouring rain last Saturday. So this Gamecock offense will look to get going early on. Sam Contorno, the birthday boy, the pooch kick. Fair catch called for. And here come the Gamecocks. Zarek Cooper, first half, four of eight passing, 68 yards and a score. He needs one more touchdown to become the Gamecocks' all-time leading passer. In his third year in this offense, you can see how comfortable he is. And he'll get the offense rolling. Ben, one thing to note, in this early season here, third game of the year, so far, it has not been a good third quarter for Jacksonville State this year. They've been outscored 27-3 in the third quarter in the first two games. They look to change that here today. Josh Samuel, the running back, both tight ends, Landon Rice and Trey Berry in tight left. It's a give to Samuel, cuts it up. The leading rusher on the season will pick up two. Wallace Cowens Jr. and Christian Taylor were both there for UNA. And Josh Samuel, a Western Kentucky transfer. You see Christian Taylor right there in the screen coming up, making the big tackle. First five minutes of the third quarter, huge for both teams. Running the football, something Jacksonville State wants to do. They had 52 yards on the ground in the first half. Cooper on second down. Pressure comes. Cooper. Stays on his feet, takes a lick as he chunks it down the field. It's broken up. Will Evans and Jacob Cummings applying the pressure. Oh, I tell you what, <laughs> Cooper's lucky. That was not a huge loss. You'll see pressure coming off the edge there, Cooper eluding it. And then Will Evans laying the lumber. Great job out there by K.J. Smith of knocking that football away. That's a big time play right there from the senior. Jacksonville State, two of four on third down tries in the first half. The dump off underneath to Jared Scott. He can't break free. Jacob Cummings with the third down tackle. Big, big tackle there from Jacob Cummings. You mentioned it. It's going to be fourth down, and it looks like the Gamecocks will bring on the punt unit. Big play there from the North Alabama defense. Second time Jacksonville State has gone three and out. Preston Knight out to punt. Jack Peavy back to return the punt. The Jacksonville State legacy. His father, Scott, played on the 92 National Championship team. Knight with a short kick. Peavy waving off the troops. There's a penalty marker down in front of the North Alabama sideline. Some kind of alignment issue, you'd think. This could be big. I think North Alabama will decline this, a false Illegal start. Formation, offense, more than four men in the backfield. The five-yard penalty will be added on to the end of the run, first down. Added on at the end of the kick. 
Great build position for this North Alabama offense. And Brian, let's talk North Alabama. Third year of this Division I transition. Chris Willis trying to build program depth. He wants to see his team play a full four-quarter ball game. Absolutely. They need to get that done here today. And what better time to start that against what your biggest rival, your biggest game of the year, your only home game of the year. Good time to do it today. Blank Deaver in that first half, 15 of 22 for a buck 38. No turnovers, however. Throwing on first down, completes the pass to Jacoby Bird. And look at Bird flying ahead for the first down pickup. I mentioned it earlier about Blake Deaver growing up in front of us. He has played a really good game here today. Sold the fake and then throws a strike out on the edge. And then absolutely Jacoby Bird knows, knows what to do with it. Turns it upfield, gets the first down. Great first play of this drive for the Lions. You talk to... You and eight people, Jacoby Bird, a physical wide receiver, just 5'9". Deaver to the air again. Jacksonville State chases him down. The pocket collapsed. DJ Coleman and company there. Yeah, great rush off the edge there. You mentioned DJ Coleman, a preseason All-American, had seven tackles against Florida State, 59 all of last year, including 10 and a half tackles for loss. We'll rack up another one here in this 2020 season. That was a loss of about a yard. The broadcaster note on DJ Coleman, third year at Jacksonville State, third different number he has worn. 12 is what he was last year. North Alabama behind the sticks, second and 11 now. Deaver back to the air and a miscue right there. And again, Blake Deaver takes a shot, laid out flat on his back, helped up by his teammates. Blake Deaver has had to be tough today. He is getting knocked around. There is no doubt about it. You'll see the shot here. Right in the midsection, a little miscommunication as you mentioned. Now, third and long here for the Lions. Four of nine on third down for this North Alabama offense today. Driggers out of the backfield. Stunt comes, throws for Swanson, the tight end, Corson Swan rather. Incomplete, and both teams force a punt on the opening possession. Here comes Joe Gurley. Trey Bendoff in on coverage right there. Had a career high three tackles against North Alabama last year. Breaks up the pass, and as you mentioned, fourth down here for the Lions. Joe Gurley, a 42-yard punt in the first half. 166 career punts at North Alabama. Gurley gets off a booming kick. He'll turn and watch that one sail into the end zone. And that's how the second half will open up. North Alabama 10, Jacksonville State 7. The score remains the same in Florence. Second possession of this second half for Jacksonville State. Traveling to Florence for the first time since 1992. They trail by three. Zarek Cooper, 5 of 10, 75 yards passing and a score. First and 10 from his own 20. Run pass option, first reception for Logan McVay. Quick pickup of 15. How about Logan McVay coming in there and making that big catch. Good route right there by McVay. He was on special teams most of last year. And comes up with a big catch here on this first play of the drive. Jacksonville State lost roughly 76% of their receiver production from a season ago. Then you factor in no spring training, no summer workouts. There's a big lane, Uriah West. Another first down pickup, back-to-back -back big gains. Uriah West is a big time runner and likes to lower the boom. KJ Smith did a good job there of hanging on. Zarek Cooper preaching patience to his receivers, knowing that chemistry will come. Gamecocks on the move, West, Boykin, there to greet him. 
High Boy can again with a big tackle, came up with a tackle for loss early in the first quarter, gets another one here. Uriah West, four carries, 25 yards now. Boykin just disrupting plays in the backfield. Rice and Bear, you're in at tight end. There's Rice motioning to the left. West, again on the feed. Look at Will Evans chasing him down. Will Evans is a guy that is a run-stopping linebacker. Lowers the boom. I love that number with a linebacker, number 44. Come out. Helmet came off number 25 defense. 40-second clock. Will Evans, 33 games played in his career at North Alabama at a Haleyville High School. Third and 11. Gamecocks need to make it down to the 41. Two of five on third down tries. Blitz comes, Cooper passes out of it, breaking free. McVay has the first down, he's still going. What a job, first of all, by the quarterback, seeing the blitz coming right up the middle and off the edge, a couple of different places, stands in there. And then, wow, look at McVay here, just keeps the legs churning. K.J. Smith finally rolls him down. Big play there, first down for Jacksonville State. That was maximum effort to get that first yes. down. Gamecocks on the move. Cooper play action. He can run. And he'll slide down inside the 20. Good, good coverage there from the North Alabama secondary. Nobody was open. And then Zary Cooper, we talked about earlier, has the legs, the dangerous legs to make things happen. Picked up about eight there. Cooper talked about on the Jacksonville State podcast behind the beak. He spent the offseason working out with Cam Newton and Deshaun Watson. Seeing shades of both of those quarterbacks today. He'll keep it, dumps off to Barry. And again, there's Will Evans with a great tackle. Will Evans was pretty quiet, to be honest with you, in the Liberty game. But here in the second half, he has made his presence known. Great open field tackle on Trey Barry, who's got great size, 6'7", 245 pounds. Will Evans goes 6'2", 234. Comes up and makes the big play. Now big third down here for the Gamecocks. Third and four. Need to make it down to the 17. Three of six on third down tries. Everyone in tight. The give. Off right tackle West with a hard run. And he'll come up a yard short it would appear. Yeah, I think you're right. He's going to be short, but I love the confidence that this Jacksonville State coaching staff is showing in their running game. Saying, hey, offensive line, I know you can get us three or four yards. Running back, go. Get down in there. We'll see what they try here. It's fourth and short. The six foot five, 329 pound Broderick Martin checks in for North Alabama. Big boy football on fourth and one. Cooper to West. Cooper keeps it. Did he have enough on the plunge? Boy, that's close. K.J. Smith was there to clean him up. Jacksonville State says they have it. They may measure this. This could come down to one of those right foot, left foot spots you see here. K.J. Smith gets him, but Zerry Cooper strong enough to fight forward. Mike Boykin there, greeting Uriah West. Let's watch the stretch. Ooh. And it is an inch short. North <laughs> Alabama gets the stop. No, it's a first down. The North Alabama defense went rushing off. They thought they had it, and JSU will stay on the field. Wow. Wow. 
North Alabama was celebrating, and Jacksonville State wants to run a play right now. And Chris Willis wants an exp uh, explanation over here on the North Alabama sideline. the field, the offense made a first down. The play is under further review. So they'll review this. This will be a tough review to overturn. And we'll find out after the break. 7.43 to go in the third quarter. Jacksonville State on the move. We'll get the call when we return to football. So the call stands the Gamecocks. Get the fourth in inches. They'll have it first and 10 from the 17. Zarek Cooper taking it into his own hands, keeping the drive alive. We talk about football being a game of inches. There you go. North Alabama sprinted off the field like they had it. Zach Cangelosi, though, the center, he said not so fast. And here come the Gamecocks on first down, back to the ground. Zaria West, not much there. Always seems like in rivalry games, you have some kind of play like that, a strange happening that really changes the way the game is played. We'll yet to see if that's what happens here. If you're a fan of physical football, then oh. this is what we've gotten today. This has been great. Second down and about seven for Cooper. Rice and Berry, the tight ends, shift. Cooper will keep it. Looking for Quan Charleston, and look at some extracurriculars after the play. There's the penalty flag down in the backfield as well, Ben. They may have hit Cooper late. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Really, North Alabama has stayed away from penalties like that. First one today that I can remember where they shoot themselves in the foot. Jacob Cummings very late on that hit. Cooper and Deaver have both stood strong. They've both taken some hits. They'll both need an ice bath. First and goal for the Gamecocks off the penalty from the eight. Cooper, the pressure comes, buys some time, and it's broken up by K.J. Smith. What a play. That is just a fantastic job by K.J. Smith, staying with his defender and then getting a hand on the football. Watch this play right here. You won't see it really done any better. The hesitation to keep Will Evans off balance. That's just outstanding. Outstanding play right there by K.J. Smith. They call K.J. Smith unk. You've got three, four new starters in the secondary. K.J. Smith is in his third year now at North Alabama. Second and goal. Hard run from Pat Jackson stood up. How many times have we called Mike Boykin's name? And Boykin showing a lot of raw emotion there. He's fired up. You can, you can tell this is a game both of these teams want desperately to win. And this kind of game right here, Ben, is what it takes to build a rivalry back. Well, you can see it just kind of building right before your eyes here. Mike Boykin at his fourth school in four years, started at Mississippi Gulf Community College, then to Louisville. Into Tennessee State, now to North Alabama. Third and goal from the eight. Cooper. A touchdown would give him the Jacksonville State record. Looking for it for Barry, and there comes the penalty marker. Count them one, two. Is there a third back there? Yeah, pretty easy call right there. I think some feet got tangled up. Over there in the corner of the end zone. We'll see what the call is here. But. Pass interference. Defense. Foul occurred into the end zone. Ball be placed at the two-yard line. Foul's number 14. Penalty results in automatic first down. Brian, you were reaching for your handkerchief. You couldn't get yours out in time. Everybody yeah, saw that one. Everybody was throwing. You'll see it here right in the corner of the end zone. Yeah, probably a good chance for Barry to catch that if it's – not interference. First and goal now from the two. The Gamecocks will try to run for it. Plunging ahead, 
The knee was down. It looked like the ball might have crossed. Pat Jackson on the carry. Broderick Martin going to check back in in the middle. 6'5", 329 pound defensive tackle. Brings up second down. Cooper under center on second and goal from the one. Cooper will try the sneak. Cooper muscling it in. Touchdown, Gamecocks. How about the strength show right there by Zary Cooper? Super strong in the backfield. He already leads the team in rushing touchdowns. Tackled another one. He is a big, strong running back. Look at the second effort here from Cooper. Just reaches it across and gets six for his team. He carried Wallace Cowens Jr. into the end zone. Our two impact players. Yeah, absolutely. Big time matchup right there. Zarek Cooper, his second touchdown of the day, puts Jacksonville State back out in front. The extra point attempt from Alan Karadzic is perfect. And it's a new score in Florence. Jacksonville State back out in front, 14 to 10, our score. You're watching the Big South Conference Game of the Week presented maybe before. Jacksonville State, 14 plays, 80 yards. Zarek Cooper, one yard plunge for this touchdown. His fourth rushing score of the season. Gamecocks out in front, 14 to 10 now. First half, North Alabama had the long drives. Second half, well, Jacksonville State just put on an impressive one. Bryant Wallace from Florence, Alabama. Rogers High School, the pooch kick. And North Alabama will look to answer. Pepsi is proud to be the official beverage partner of the Big South Conference Championships. So don't forget to pick up a delicious, refreshing Pepsi today. Pepsi, that's what I like. North Alabama offense looking to get back to what they did in the first half, picking up chunks of yardage, trailing 14 to 10. Last time Jacksonville State took the lead, North Alabama immediately responded. Time now to get things cranked back up for the Lions here. Deaver so far, 16 of 25, 150 yards. Here he is on first and 10. Little option pitch to Ron Thompson who has the corner. Jack Wooder Thompson chases him out. New little wrinkle there from the Lions, just flipping it out on the edge there to the speedy Ron Thompson. By number 24, and they're going to give him maybe seven yards on the play. Yes, second, second and three. North Alabama will huddle. Second down and three. Deaver will keep it. Wide open, Cortez Hall. Oh, down the sideline, nobody was around him. How in the world do you forget about Cortez Hall? He was wide open, as you mentioned, on the edge. He might have been a little bit surprised. Watch here when he catches the football. Hesitates for just a second, then turns it upfield, and he was wide open, as you mentioned. North Alabama, 15 first downs. Deaver. I thought he overthrew one receiver, but he hits Cortez Hall for the first down. Pass is complete to number eight, Cortez Hall. Did he overthrow a receiver and it just went right to Cortez Hall? We'll have to see here on the replay. He had some steam on it, and whatever it is, it worked. Hey, all that matters in the stat book, that's a completion. That's right. Back to back first downs to Cortez Hall. Just how they drew it up, right? Hall now five receptions, 43 yards. Into Jacksonville State territory. Deaver keeps it himself. He has the corner. How about that? Blake Deaver showing a little bit of running skills out on the edge there. He's not going to scamper a lot. The big boy gets on the edge right here. I'll tell you what. 
DJ Coleman really bit on that fake right there and had to turn around and try to catch up to Blake. Three straight first down pickups for North Alabama. Deaver deceptively fast or, or smart with the wheels? Maybe both. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of both maybe. North Alabama looking to respond and maybe reclaim the lead with a touchdown. Inside the 30, pressure comes. Deaver stood no chance. George still off the corner, but the penalty markers come down. You can guess what that was. Yeah, I think that's going to be a face mask. Personal foul. Pass me the face mask, number 95 of the defense. Penalties 15 yards from the previous spot. Carries an automatic first down. That's Robert Johnson, freshman nose tackle. And you'll see it on the replay here. No, actually, that was not Robert Thompson. Hey, Brian. That's George Steele. I don't want to cut you off. Blake Deaver has taken a knee at the 40. He was adjusting his helmet. Let's not forget two weeks ago against Liberty on the second drive of Time the game. Timeout for an injury offense. He got knocked out of the ball game, went into concussion protocol, was cleared to play, and he might have busted up his nose right there. Yeah, I think you're right. They're holding, looks to be some kind of tissue or something up against his nose. Yeah, I think you're right. There's going to be a timeout for the injury here, and we'll see. Rhett Files come into the game, 6'4", 235-pound redshirt sophomore. For the best in the Big South coverage, visit BigSouthSports.com. Stay current with the latest news, results, stats, standings, and more. Enjoy video features showcasing remarkable student athletes or connect to school sites or social media outlets all from one place. Remember, the source for all your conference information is Big South Sports. Dot com. North Alabama looking to answer the Jacksonville State scoring drive. Blake Deaver, he's been sharp on this drive, and now Rhett Files will have to come in and keep it alive. I'll tell you what, North Alabama's blessed to have Rhett Files on this team. He's a guy that can, can come in and play really well. You don't lose a whole lot when your backup quarterback comes into the game. Rhett Files. Last week, or two weeks ago, I should say, 15 of 24, 156 yards. Came on in relief now early in that game against Red Liberty. Files. Red Files was sacked six times in that game. Under three to play in this third quarter. Files on first down, hands off to Howell. He'll carry it down to the 11. Again, DJ Coleman there on the stop. And I don't think you'll see the offense change a lot here for North Alabama. Pretty much the same style here, not a lot of difference in the two quarterbacks. Files did not throw a pass last season. So that game against Liberty was really the most he had played since the second game of his career as a freshman against Alabama A&M. He threw four passes in that outing. Driggers motions out. Files alone. He'll try to break free. Throws for Jacoby Bird. Touchdown, North Alabama. Files to Bird from 12 yards out. Great job, Ben, by Rhett Files right there, keeping the play alive and finding his wide open receiver. Jacoby Bird makes the touchdown reception, and the Lions sneak back out. Great job by Rhett Files. Jacoby Bird's first touchdown of the year. He played his high school games in this stadium at Florence High School. Rhett Files off the bench. Jacoby Bird now 99 receptions in his career. Actually, that was his third catch today. His 100th career catch goes for a touchdown. North Alabama back out in front, 17 to 14, two minutes to go. We got two minutes left in this third quarter, a fourth quarter to play. What a ball game. What a fun game this has been, back and forth. Is that Rhett Files' first career passing yes. touchdown? I think it was. I'll tell you what, that's a big one. 
Go back in front of your rival here, 17-14. Great job by Red Files coming in. Cole off the bench, uh, nothing today. Uh, we played the first game we talked about, but comes in, throws that touchdown pass, and his team's back out in front. Find the best variety of officially licensed merchandise and conference and school branded items at BigSouthStore.com. Gear up with some new apparel or find that perfect gift. Get fully equipped for all your game day fun with BigSouthStore.com. North Alabama, Ben Laster, two weeks ago, I should say, against Liberty, ran a total of 56 plays. And that's not where Coach Willis wanted them to be. They're at 54 plays today. That's a good sign if you're a North Alabama fan. UNA scoring drives of 73, 69, 74. JSU 63 and 80. These two offenses have moved it down the field. Gowdy will get a chance to return this one. Will Evans, though, not letting him escape. You mentioned Will Evans. I want to credit. You see him on the screen right there, Jack Peavy turning that returner back to the inside. Great job there on the kickoff coverage, stayed in their lanes. And Jacksonville State in the shadow of their own goal post here at the 18-yard line. All right, Zarek Cooper's turn. These offenses getting going, 8 of 14, 113 yards a score. He's got another on the ground. Trailing by three, 150 left in the third quarter. First and 10 from the JSU 17. Cooper hesitates. Here's Barry down the sideline. When you need a big play, who do you turn to? Your big tight end, Trey Barry. Yeah, why not? He's the guy you want to try to find. He's the one that North Alabama has to keep an eye on. Great job by Cooper, sells the fake, and then throws it right down the sideline to the big tight end, 6'7", 245. His fourth reception. Barry coming off of the knee injury a season ago. Looks great. Cooper dumps it off. Samuel room to go. K.J. Smith shoves him out around midfield. And here come the Gamecocks moving once again. Broderick Martin limping off the field with an injury. Ryan Taylor comes into his spot. At the defensive tackle position, 6'2", 303 out of Loganville, Georgia. He's an Arkansas State transfer. Defensive line depth, something they addressed this offseason, the UNA coaching staff. They feel like they're about 10 or 11 deep now on the defensive line. Cooper, play action. Wants to load up. Barry again. Here goes Barry. Touchdown saving tackle from Kyrie Fields. Well, he's the one. Trey Barry, when Zary Cooper needs a big play, he's going to look for number four. Great down the field vision from Barry. Let's the play develop. Knows where Barry's going to be and then finds him. And as you mentioned, a great tackle there by Kyrie Fields to save the touchdown. Cooper to Barry. Gamecocks in business. First and goal from the 10. The give to Samuel. Bounces out, but he can't cut it in. A good strong run down to the one. Boy, what a game. North Alabama marches right down the field. Answers, here comes Jacksonville State right back as the third quarter begins to wind down. We'll see if they get another playoff. Fresh bodies coming in for North Alabama. Cooper, he'll take it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville State. There is a penalty marker down. I think North Alabama might have had too many people on the field. Illegal substitution defense. That penalty will be declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Zarek Cooper's second touchdown scamper. That might have been the easiest play he's had all game. Uh, Jacksonville State made that whole drive look easy. Cooper just scoots into the Time end out zone here, puts his injury. team back in front. Boy, what a fourth quarter this is going to be. Back and forth, North Alabama led, Jacksonville State led, UNA led, now the Gamecocks back out in front once again. Jacksonville State has not lost to North Alabama in Raleigh Stadium since 1985. This drive started at the J JSU 17. Worst field position of the day for the Gamecocks. 
Trey and Berry, five catches, 104 yards. Worst starting field position as there's a Gamecock down here. Worst starting field position, but maybe their best looking drive of the game. And it all started with Cooper to Berry. The injured Gamecock helped off the field. Jacksonville State had 10 total second half points coming into this one. They've now posted two touchdowns in this third quarter. Jacksonville State back out in front, 21 to 17. Four seconds left in this third quarter. For years, the Big South has staged a 5K in Charlotte to benefit middle school athletics, but now it's gone virtual. And you can participate from anywhere with the new Hercules Tires Big South Virtual 5K. You can join the school teams, support a variety of causes, and be eligible for prizes. There's still time to register. Go to BigSouth5K.com and sign up. Get your run in anytime between October 18th and November 15th and share your results. It's that simple. The Hercules Tires Big South Virtual 5K. The way these offenses are playing, it feels like we're running a 5K here in Brawley Stadium. One more quarter to go. Red Files off the bench with his first career touchdown pass. Then Zarek Cooper with the rushing touchdown. Pooch kick, fair catch called for. Fair catch called for by number 88, Eli Cazola. That's Eli Cazola. Offensive lineman turned tight in. Fielding kickoffs. Yeah, through the stat out earlier, Jacksonville State outscored in the third quarter this year, 27 to three. They haven't owned this third quarter here today against North Alabama, but it's been their best quarter of the day so far. I mean, the first half they went punt, turnover on downs, touchdown, punted on the first drive of this half. Yeah. And now touchdown, touchdown. I'm sure John Gross liking what he's seen on these last two drives. So this should be the final play of the third quarter. Blake Deaver will look to respond. Deaver to Howell on the screen, and there was nothing much going there. Howell will lose one, and that will bring the third quarter to a close. We go to the fourth in this in-state rivalry, the 48th meeting. The Gamecocks lead the Lions 21-7. You're watching the Big South Conference Game of the Week, brought to you by Geico. Pow. We open up the fourth quarter of this in-state rivalry. Jacksonville State leading North Alabama. UNA with the football, second and 12, working left to right now. Blake Deaver back in the game, and he's sacked. Chris Hardy finishing him off. A helmet comes off. DJ Coleman was there. And Jacksonville State opening up this fourth quarter with a bang. Yeah, Jacksonville State beginning to apply a little pressure here on Blake Deaver. Really nothing off of a blitz there. He just came from right up the middle and bringing him down. Big third down here for the Lions. Two touchdown runs from Zarek Cooper for Jacksonville State gave the Gamecocks a 21-17 lead. That's where we are here as we open up this fourth quarter. Third and long for North Alabama. UNA 4 of 10 on third downs. Deaver escapes, tries to throw for it. Darius Joyner applying the pressure. Umstead Sanders there as well. Yeah, again, getting pressure on the quarterback in the backfield. Blake Deaver back in the game after going out with an injury. And a fourth down here, a punt upcoming for North Alabama. Jason Jones back to return the punt. And this is turning into a key moment for Jacksonville State. The offense has scored on back-to-back -back drives and a chance to really open things up in the fourth quarter. Joe Gurley, two punts, a 43-yard average so far. 
He gets off a high one. Jones will call for the fair catch at the 39. And here come the Gamecocks. 21 to 17 the lead. Zarek Cooper's been rolling. And Brian King Cooper, the, the, the veteran that's rewriting the record book, make a big drive here to maybe open this game up. Yeah, that's the question uh, that both teams are looking at right here. Can, can Zarek Cooper come down and lead his team? Uh, into the end zone, can North Alabama defense stand strong and get the football back a ton of time left in this fourth quarter? Just a four-point game. You're just joining us. North Alabama struck first to lead three to nothing at the end of the first quarter. The Lions would lead 10 to seven at the end of the first half. Couple of lead changes in the third quarter, and here comes Cooper. He's tied Ed Lett for the most touchdown passes in a career at Jacksonville State with 61. Back to pass. Cooper will step up. Cooper somehow stays on his feet. That was Terrell Townsend trying to corral him. And credit the North Alabama secondary. There was absolutely nobody open downfield for the Lions. And Zary Cooper, as you mentioned, just did a great job of getting rid of that football. Great coverage by North Alabama. These two defensive lines, not a lot of blitzes, but they've been getting after it. Yeah, they've been able to get some pressure on these two quarterbacks here today. And North Alabama coming with a four-man front. Barry and Rice shift to the left. Cooper on the give, West, Elaine. He'll roll close to the first down. Pick up a nine or ten. I mean, nine sets up third and short. Great job by the Jacksonville State offense of paving the way for West. West now with nine carries. Here's number ten. He'll have the first down. Wallace Cowens Jr. takes him down after the first down pickup. Wallace Cowens Jr. Trying to rip that football out of there, create that turnover that North the Alabama first down for the Gamecocks. is looking for right now. You know, Brian, you go back to the third quarter, that fourth down in inches. UNA celebrated like yeah. they got it. Jacksonville State with later score. Here we are. You just think, what if there was a stop? Cooper taking a shot. Has his man. It's broken up. Kamayan Fagans and Dave Russell and Fagans, the red shirt freshman. He made his first career start last week against Liberty with the breakup. Look at this coverage here by Fagans. Just knocks it out of there. The catch was made and Fagans just knocked it out. Wow, good play. Four members of the UNA secondary made their first career start in the week one game against Liberty. Second and 10 for the Gamecocks. The give to West up the middle. Alonzo Creighton stepping up from his safety spot. It's a good pickup of about four, sets up a third down and medium. Big third down here, and if you're Jacksonville State, the only guy I'm looking at is lining up here on this left side as a slot receiver. That's Trey Berry. Got to keep an eye on him. There you see him in the slot. The third down try. Cooper completes it. Russell has it. First down, Gamecocks inside the 25. Big time throw there from Zarek Cooper. And a big catch there from his receivers. You mentioned Dave Russell looks at the throw here from Cooper. A little three-step drop, slings across the middle, in traffic, first down. And a mishap right here, penalty markers everywhere. There's a penalty marker on both sides. Let's try to sort it out here. One back in the secondary, two on each side of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, so three flags, you're right. Ball start, offense, five yard penalty, first down. Early penalties in the first quarter. 
Really kept Jacksonville State on their heels. If you're a Gamecock, you don't want to start having these here, leading by four and trying to tack on more. Jacksonville State had seven penalties in the first half. Correction, five penalties in the first half. That was their third of the second half. First and 15. Braden Hill's in the game at tight end. And a botched snap. Cooper will keep it. And look at him. Plowing ahead, turning nothing into something. That's a smart play right there. That, that play right there is not going to make many highlight reels. Zara Cooper does exactly what he needs to do there. Don't try to force something. The ball's on the ground. Just pick it up and get what you can out of it. That is a really heads-up play there by Cooper. I like that play a lot. And now you're looking at the first down penalty. And it's second and ten. Yes. You pretty much second got it back. That's right. Cooper's a smart quarterback. NFL aspirations started at Clemson, third year at Jacksonville State. And what a career he's had for the Gamecocks. North Alabama shows pressure now. Whistles. Cooper wanted to take a shot. Play game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So take away everything we just talked about getting it back. That's exactly right, yep. And again, here we go. The same mistakes that Jacksonville State was having in the first quarter. Second down Personnel down changes down here for North Cubs. Alabama. Broderick Ryan Martin back in. Wallace defense. Cowens Jr. back in. So it's second and 15 now. Cooper. Pressure comes. Spins away from it. Dances around and he'll just hurl that one out of bounds. Houdini. Houdini just eluding the defense Cooper throws the ball away under in the backfield. Wow. And that Patrick was against Ford. a three-man rush. Yeah. Brings up third down and long for the game. The battle in the trenches has been a fun one on both sides. Big, big, big third down here. Back-to-back -back touchdown drives for Jacksonville State to lead it. 21-17. An announced crowd of 4,600 in Brawley Stadium trying to make some noise on third and long. The screen out to West. West with some blockers. He'll take it down inside the 20 to the 19. Will Evans was the first lion there. And it looks like the field goal unit's coming out. That's a win for the North Alabama defense right there. As there's another injured Gamecock down on the field. That's a win for North Alabama, keeping them to this field goal attempt. It's Uriah West, who's been a busy man in this second half. Timeout, player injury. His 11 carries for 49 yards in this game. He had 14 touches in the first two games. Alan Karadja going to come in here for the field goal attempt. Has not missed an extra point or a field goal this year. Just his second year of organized football. Leads FCS in field goals made per game. Looking for his first in this one. Unofficially, a 25-yarder. It's on the way, and he remains perfect. The Gamecocks extend the lead out to a touchdown. Seven-point advantage for the road team. We'll be back to Florence after this. Three straight scoring drives for Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks have scored 17 points in the second half. They have a touchdown lead over North Alabama. First time the Gamecocks have been in Brawley Stadium since 1992. You got to go back to 1985 for the Gamecocks' last loss in Florence. Playing today without their head football coach, John Gross, here. Is that kick? For Brian Wallace goes out of bounds. Free kick out of bounds. Ball be spotted at the 35-yard line on the right hash. First down. North Alabama. One scoring drive in this second half. 
Fans, please continue to wear your mask and practice social distancing. 10.23 to, to go. A rivalry reborn today. We've talked a lot about Zarek Cooper, his counterpart, Blake Deaver. Brian, he's been pretty sharp today. Yes, he has. 19 of 29, 176 yards through the air. Looking for that first touchdown pass. This would be what a drive to get it on. Opens up from the 35. There's Corson Swan, the motion man. He's been quiet in this second half. Deaver to Driggers. Nothing going after the catch. Zach Woodard on the stop. Deaver's pass is complete. Parker Driggers, Parker Driggers, really a factor Comes in this offense. Down. Two weeks ago at Liberty for the Lions. Carried the football often today, has carried it, caught a couple of passes. He's becoming a factor here quick for the Lions. We talked to Driggers this week out of Brantley, Alabama. Brantley had a couple of uh, NBA stars in the Pearson family. He said he wants to be the first to make it to the NFL. Deaver to Dexter Boykin, in and out of his hands. Tight coverage. That's Jewel Gowdy over there. Well, that's a ball that I'll guarantee you. You talk to Dexter Boykin after the game, he's going to tell you, I should have caught that football. And that ball had a lot of heat on it, a lot of steam, tough to catch. But Dexter Boykin, always tough on himself, says, yes, I should have caught that. The way this Jacksonville State offense is moving, you really do not want to go three and out right here. That's right. North Alabama, four of 11 on third down tries. Triggers the motion man. Deaver will step up, pocket collapses. Deaver, a late plunge. He'll come up about a yard short. Zach Woodard, Jalen Swain, two of the four Gamecocks there. And he will be an inch short. Well, easy for me to say this in the booth because I'm not being chased by some 6'5", 245 pound monster, but he had a wide open receiver in Andre Little that he just didn't see. Here comes the jumbo package, Jacob Terry and Eli Cazola. These two teams on fourth down today, they've gone for it a combined six times. Deaver will line up as a receiver. Driggers from the Wildcat needs one yard. He'll try it up the middle. Parker Driggers has the first down. Kobe Fuquay on the stop. He'll take it into Gamecock territory. That is big boy football right there. That's just Parker Driggers putting his head down and getting what he can. You'll see it right up the middle, then spins out of a tackle. Picks up the first momentum right now wearing purple. Big boy football from both sides. I love it. First and 10. Deaver had the hard count. That was the first third down conversion. Excuse me, UNA 0 of 3 on third down in this second half. Deaver to Littles. Andre Little took a hit. He'll have the first down. You're right on the hit. Jemias Presley, sophomore quarterback out of Opelika, come up and laid the boom right there. Great job by Andre Little to hang on to it, moves the sticks. First down. Eight minutes to go in this fourth quarter. North Alabama looking to answer the Gamecocks. was the first reception of the game for Andre Little. Deaver nowhere to go. You can call that a coverage sack. Umstead Sanders, DJ Coleman. Those two have been all over the place. Yeah, you're exactly right, saying it was a coverage sack. There was nobody open for North Alabama in the secondary. Great job by the Jacksonville State defense getting pressure and the secondary for covering. Loss of four on the play. The third Gamecock sack today. They had two entering this game. Second and long now. Triggers will leave Deaver alone. Pressure comes. Deaver gets rid of it in time. Made it back to the line of scrimmage. Deaver 
Peters pass. Blitz right there. up the middle. And Deaver took another shot, and I, they just dropped the flag. This may be grounding. Maybe it did make it back to the line of scrimmage. Intentional grounding, number seven on the offense. The penalty is a loss of down at the spot of the pass. Was he out of the pocket? Defensive coordinator Kevin S Kelvin Sigler with a well-timed blitz. And a promising North Alabama drive where you get the fourth and short. Now you've got third and a mile. Need to get down to the 28. The six foot six Patrick McCoffman, an Oklahoma State transfer, has checked in for North Alabama. He's up at the top of your screen. He's a guy that can go get it with his size. Underneath to Howell, he'll check down. Juwan Howell will take it out of bounds. George Steele pushes him out. Peter's pass is complete to number 24, Juwan Howell. Still way short of the first down. No down. choice but to send out the punt unit. This Jacksonville State defensive line is getting the job done in this fourth quarter. Yes, they are. They are getting pressure on the quarterback. And I'll say this too, the secondary is showing great coverage as well. And I think North Alabama going to punt it away here. North Alabama now 0 for 4 on third down tries in this second so half. Jason Joe Gurley on the punt for the Lions. Jason Jones will stand at his own 10. Joe Gurley. Kicked it right to Jones. I don't know that he had to move. Calls for the fair catch at the 10. Here we go, 6.06 to play. Jacksonville State with the lead. We'll try to finish this game out. You're watching the Big South Conference. Crunch time here in Florence, Alabama. Fourth quarter, Jacksonville State football. The Gamecocks have scored on three straight possessions. They have a touchdown lead over North Alabama. Cooper throwing on first down on this drive. Hits Dave Russell. Brian Zarek Cooper in this second half. How crisp has he been? Oh, he has been money throughout this entire second half. And I'll tell you what, who else? Two guys that have really stood out to me receiving these passes has been Trey Berry, the tight end, and Dave Russell. He's been on the money. So Jacksonville State. You want the clock running, points you can just about get a little bit of breathing room. And North Alabama has not managed to stop this offense on the last three drives. Cooper will turn, gives. That's Pat Jackson. That'll pick up a couple of yards and keep the clock churning. Three timeouts left for North Alabama. Looking for the turnover here. You see a few of the guys trying to reach those hands in there and rip that football away. First half, it was North Alabama with the long drive staying on the field. Second half, it's been Jacksonville State. Rice and Berry come in tight. Cooper will keep. Cooper will have the first down. Number six, Zarek Cooper. Again, the big boy play there from Zarek Cooper. Benny's just putting his head down, just getting whatever he can. 230 through the air. Now close to 50 on the ground. Cooper along with Trey Berry on the Reese Senior Bowl, top 250 watch list. Trying to show he belongs up there. First and 10. They give to Jackson again. Jackson spinning, pickup of about three. More importantly, the clock continues to roll. North Alabama really needs a stop on this possession. As you see there on your screen, the clock ticking down under four minutes. Still three timeouts in your pocket. 
on, on, on this series. This series of downs right here. Second down, you need to stop. You think about using the timeout depending on the outcome of this play? Yes, absolutely. Cooper will throw. Cooper completes it, and again, it's Dave Russell. How many times have we called his name in this fourth quarter? Oh, he's been the man. He has absolutely been the man offensively. My Boykin hobbles off the field here for North Alabama. Watch this throw. This is just, this throw doesn't get any better. A little touch on it. Great coverage there by Fagans. Just a better throw and a better catch. Jacksonville State possibly needing just one first down to maybe run this clock out. Jimmy Ogle, offensive coordinator, his 21st season at Jacksonville State. Acting head coach, if you will, in the absence of John Gross. Totally different offense from the first half to the second half. Absolutely, and they've run it almost to perfection here in half number two. Under three to play. Cooper taking his time. Jackson will stretch. He'll pick up one. And North Alabama will begin using the timeouts. Timeout. That's the play they were looking for to use a timeout. North Alabama. These two teams. Please reset the game clock to two minutes, 31 seconds, please. These two teams just couple of handful of FCS schools playing this fall. And for Jacksonville State, they're trying to get back up to the top of FCS. They're moving the football right here. 231 to go. Jacksonville State football trying to come away with a win in Florence. Second and nine for Jacksonville State, trying to run out this clock. 231 left in the game, leading by a touchdown. Cooper gives to Jackson up ahead. He'll carry it down to about the 34. And watch out right here. First down pickup here for Jacksonville State. Be the icing on the Sunday that has been great today. And you got to think about here, Allen, the uh, kicker, Karadzic. Where are they at in field goal range? His long this year is 43 yards. They're not in that range yet. Need a stop here if you're a North Alabama fan. North Alabama not calling the timeout. Putting it on their defense right here. Get a stop. Jacksonville State will run it down and call the timeout. Time Jacksonville State, first charge timeout. And now the Gamecocks will talk things through. Zarek Cooper, time what out. a ball game he's had. Seconds. He had not thrown a touchdown pass they this season. To he finally the found the end zone, his 61st football. career the touchdown the pass, now tied for most in Gamecock seven, history seven, 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 with Ed Lett. He's still chasing the career passing yard list. Eli Jenkins sits on top of that one. Get social with the Big South. Join the always growing network of Big South fans on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. You can also follow the conference source for game updates and on-site championship coverage via Twitter at Big South Game Day. Follow, watch, like, and share it with the Big South Conference. Huge play right here, third down. The game pretty much hangs in the balance right here. North Alabama needs a stop in the worst of ways. Jackson and West are both in the ball game. The Gamecocks need two. Cooper will give to Samuel rather. And he should have enough for the first down. I believe you're right. I think second effort. I think he's got it. Talk about a patient run. Look at the Gamecock coaches. 
Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> what happened on our last measurement? Anybody remember that? Oh, my. Jacksonville State, the offensive lineman signaling first down. That's Josh Wagner. The big fellas up front in the trenches. Both lines have battled all day. Well, what a turn of events it would be if they are short here. I think he's got it, though. He had it by a yard. Yeah. Jacksonville State can just about run this clock out. The Gamecocks. Trailed 10 to 7 at the end of the first half. Trailed again 17 to 14. And they scored 10 unanswered. And they're 90 seconds away from winning inside of Brawley Stadium for the first time since 1992. And they'll take this play clock down to as far as they can before they snap it. UNA does have two timeouts left. Cooper gives to Samuel. Coming up next for Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks time will out. wrap up their four-game fall schedule. Second charge They'll time go out. on the road at Florida International. Then JSU seconds. will get set for the seven-game spring schedule that begins February 21st. Jacksonville State, one of just four OVC schools playing in the fall. Eastern Kentucky, Alston P, SEMO, the others. North Alabama on the flip side. This is just game number two. FCS teams playing the FCS playoffs in the spring. No Big South announcement yet on what that schedule will look at. North Alabama. Next, the Lions will have two weeks off before going to Southern Miss on, on November 7th. And the Lions will conclude their season with a trip out to Brigham Young University on well, November 21st, third year of Division I football for North Alabama. The Lions wanted to use this fall to sort of see where they were, especially a game like today. Odds are Jacksonville State's going to win this ball game, but Chris Willis and his team gave a great game to the Gamecocks. A measuring stick, and I think North Alabama's held their own here today. North Alabama with one more timeout. Cooper with a give to Samuel. He'll pick up a couple. Chris Willis will quickly call timeout. one more timeout. North Alabama, third, final charge timeout. The timeout will be 30 seconds. You talk about a tale of two halves, Brian. First half, UNA ran 44 plays to 20 for Jacksonville State. Second half, you can almost flip it exact, 44 to 21 in favor of Jacksonville State. And that's a credit to the Gamecock defense. They have really stepped up here in this second half and really eliminated any opportunities that North Alabama's had. North Alabama does have a touchdown here in the second half, but they have done a great job of just stuffing everything that the Lions have tried. Zarek Cooper, 244, passing one touchdown, nine carries, 46 yards, and two scores. Five rushing touchdowns for Zarek Cooper on the season. Year two of a four-year contract between these two schools. Great turnout in Florence today. The series will return to Jacksonville next year. Here come the Gamecocks on third down. Here's Uriah West. Christian Taylor there. And North Alabama will get one more shot at it potentially. About a 16-second differential or so. Gamecock and game clock and play clock. Fourth down for the Gamecocks. You try a field goal. 
Maybe run another offensive play, punt it. Well, Alan Karadzic, their kicker, he is stellar. He has not missed all year long. JSU's going to let it run down here and talk about it. Jacksonville State, 389 yards of total timeout. offense. Jacksonville State, second charge timeout. The timeout will be 30 seconds. Do you risk kicking a field goal here and having it blocked? You trust your kicker enough? If you're North Alabama and they do try a field goal attempt, do you have something in your bag that is just an all-out full go at it? At the kick, interesting to see what happens here. Crazy things happen in rivalries. You, you mentioned that North Alabama may think back to 1980. A Hail Mary pass, Fred Riley to Jerry Hill for North Alabama. That was the school's first ever Gold South Conference Championship. Back in 1980, fans from both sides, you've heard chatter all week. Anybody you talk with, they're excited for this game, and they were treated to a great one today. Absolutely. I'm excited for this rivalry to see it continue, and I hope I hope they play year in and year out, just from here on out. Just play year in and year out. It's, it's great for the state. It's great for these fans. It's great for both alumni bases. Build this rivalry back up to what it once was. Looks like JSU is going to keep the offense on the field here. So Zarek Cooper on fourth down. We'll try to make it down to the 21. Cooper will roll out. Throws it up for the end zone. Jump ball broken up. Looking for David Russell. Will Singleton was there. 11 seconds. And the Gamecocks turn it over on down. 11 downs. seconds, you'll have it. And 10 for the Lions. From the 30, you got to go 70 yards. You have time to run something underneath. You got to go to the boundary here. Got to go to the boundary. Blake Deaver does have a strong arm. Something else to watch, Jacksonville State will rush three. In this front group for Jacksonville State, DJ Coleman, Umstead Sanders, they've been great. The six foot six, Patrick McCoffman is alone to the right. Deaver with 11 seconds left, needing a touchdown. And look who gets to him, it's DJ Coleman, the ball comes out. Penalty marker down, Jacob Gentle recovers. And DJ Coleman might have gotten too much face mask there. I think so. Personal foul, face mask, defense number two. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. Now a Hail Mary, a, a little bit more manageable. Clock will start on the snap. So you've got to go from the 45, 55 yards through the air for the end zone. Stranger things have happened. We'll get a jump ball. And don't forget, Patrick Kaufman's in there, 6'6", 200 pounds. The pressure comes. Deaver unloads the pass is intercepted, Nicario Harper gets the interception to seal it, and Jacksonville State, for the first time since 1992, comes to Brawley Stadium, and the Gamecocks are going back to Jacksonville with a seven point win. What else could you ask for? The rivalry to come down to the last play of the game. Very well played game between these two teams, and I'll say this, the rivalry is back. North Alabama. In Jacksonville State, what a game it was. That'll do it. So for our entire crew here in Florence, our spotters and statisticians, Chase Glover and Alston Coletti, Will Corey and Eddie Forsyth directing and producing. For Brian Neese, I'm Benjamin Ray saying so long from Brawley Stadium in Florence, Alabama, where the final score is Jacksonville State 24, North Alabama 17.
All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. This Big South broadcast is brought to you in part by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com today. And by Sunbelt Rentals. We have equipment for that.